Just when I thought I was done talking about and reviewing Godfather movies, you guys pull me back in. The Godfather Part 3, Coda, The Death of Michael Corleone, is written and directed by Francis Ford Coppola and stars Al Pacino, Diane Keaton, and Talia Shire. As Michael Corleone, now in his 60s, seeks to free his family from crime and find a suitable successor to his empire. Paramount presents this film for the first time with a new 4K restoration. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media Channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken, here today to review The Godfather Coda, Part 3, uh, the Death of Michael Corleone. There's just so many titles with this one. Um, on 4K. So I'm excited to get into this. Uh, I did talk about the first two Godfathers. So if you didn't see that review, go check it out. I also unboxed uh, this set in that video as well. Uh, the new 4K set. Um, so yeah, I didn't uh, get a chance to talk about Coda because I didn't get time to watch it. But I wanted to get my thoughts on the first two Godfathers out. Because uh, I figured those were the most important. Um, but enough of you guys commented, you want to see, you wanted to see my thoughts on Coda. Um, and yeah, I'm going to give it to you here today. Kind of like I did the first two Godfathers. I, I just finished Coda probably like 30 minutes ago. So my thoughts are very fresh. They're very raw. Uh, they're going to be very unfiltered. Um, but before I get into it, if this is your first time checking me out on this channel, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I do all kinds of reviews and, and Blu-ray updates, Blu-ray 4k updates. I do Blu-ray vlogging videos. Um, I do collection hauls, unboxings, just all kinds of stuff on this channel. Check me out, hit the subscribe button. Also, be sure to like this video. And I want your thoughts on code in the comment section below. If they're good, if they're bad, which cut is your favorite? There's like 50,000 different cuts this movie. No, I think there's just three. Um, but yeah, let, let's, uh, yeah, look, well, hold on a second. Hold on, hold the phone. Before we get into it, I made a big mistake. Um, in my first review of the first two movies because I said that all the special features were legacies features uh, from previous releases and that was not the case and I did watch these new special features so I do want to talk about those uh, right off the top but first off there's an introduction from Francis Ford Coppola at the beginning of the first Godfather and at the beginning of Coda where he talks about uh, the making of those two films so definitely check those out they're right at the beginning I, I watched them all um, so those are really cool to see Francis Ford Coppola just kind of retrospectively talk about the movies, especially Coda, because he got to talk about um, how it wasn't the vision that he wanted the first time around, and he was he got to go back and redo it with Coda. Because um, there is three different versions of the movie. There's the theatrical cut, 1991 cut, and then there's um, Coda, which are all in this set, and they're all in 4K. Uh, so that's cool. But another new special feature that they added, they added a few uh, but Full Circle, Preserving the Godfather, this is an excellent special feature. I love stuff like this because I honestly don't know enough about the restoration process and I love learning more about it, uh, just what goes into it, just like the mechanics of it um, and the technology involved. It's just I, I love learning more about that stuff. I really just need to look into it a little bit more. It's a Wonderful Life. It reminded me of uh, It's a Wonderful Life, the uh, the featurette that they did with that one. And it's also Paramount, so it's the same studio. But Paramount is is doing great work with those special features. I honestly wish they would do them on everything because uh, that's super awesome. And it makes them super unique because not a lot um, of the studio labels are adding new special features like that to their releases. So I think it's really cool. Um, and just another reason why I think Paramount is just a, a cut above some of the other ones, some of the other studios sometimes. Um, cause not even boutique labels do this kind of stuff. So I, I thought that that featurette was really awesome. Um, and it just kind of highlighted the work, uh, that goes into a restoration like this. And you could tell everybody was taking this super seriously. They started it before, uh, the pandemic. So like they've literally been working on this for the past two, two and a half years. Um, and you could tell like the, the hard work paid off cause this is a beautiful restoration. I talked about it. Um, in the last video. So that's a great special feature. Also, uh, capturing the Corleones through the lens of the photographer, Steve Shaparo. So they go through like the cinematography of the Godfather movies, which is another great uh, special feature. Uh, you have the Godfather home movies. I watched a couple of those. Those are really fun. Uh, restoration comparisons. So yeah, there are some new special features in this set. And in my first review, I said that there wasn't. So I apologize for that. I did not look into it. Um, good enough. I just kind of glossed over the features. I'm like, oh, this is all, um, you know, older stuff. Even though I did the unboxing, I got two of these freaking Jade cards that told me on the back, 
um, that there was a new special video. So I, I apologize, guys. Like, I was just trying to, I guess I was just so blown away by the movies, I forgot to, you know, look into the special features. But yeah, all those special features are on Blu ray, so they're not in 4K as well. So I wanted to go ahead and call that out. Um, so let's get to talk about Godfather uh, Part Three Coda, The Death of Michael Corleone. That is a hell of a title. Um, directed by Francis Ford Coppola. This movie, it wasn't bad. I, I didn't not like the movie. Um, it did feel, it's the shortest Godfather movie and it felt the longest. <laughs> I'll say that. Um, it, it didn't feel necessary. It didn't feel necessary um, at all. At all. The, the, this movie did, does not need to exist. But I did like the explanation that Francis Ford Coppola gave to me before I, I watched the movie. It kind of helped me uh, just understand like what exactly it was and what he was going for, his vision for this. Because uh, he, he goes into saying like coda is, you know, another word for epilogue. Like this is the after, um, kind of like the after show for The Godfather. This is the stuff that you don't really need to know about. Um, but like super Godfather fans would be happy to get. So it's like, it just feels like supplemental material that we didn't need. It really didn't do anything to enhance the story for me. If anything, it kind of brought it down a little bit. Um, I'm not sure exactly. Again, The Godfather, Godfather Part Two are great movies. I'm not saying that this lessened my experience with those. I'm still going to look at them um, in the way that I do their masterpiece films. But it does kind of take away from certain aspects. And I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, so this to me also, it felt like, so Breaking Bad is one of my favorite shows of all time. It, it probably is my favorite show of all time. It has such a great ending, such a complete experience. Um, and yeah, the ending is just perfect to that show. They just summed everything up fantastic. Um, and the way it ends, like it doesn't answer everything, but it, it leaves you with some questions, some things to think about. Um, but it also feels like a very complete experience and it feels like they just fully, um, you know, nailed every aspect of what they were trying to accomplish with that show. And then you got El Camino, the Netflix exclusive Breaking Bad movie with, with Jesse and the story of Jesse after the finale. I liked that movie, but again, it, it's not necessary. And that felt like an epilogue too. So that to me was kind of like Vince Gilligan's, I guess, version of Coda. Um, so yeah, it just... It feels very unnecessary. Um, I, I could have went the rest of my life without seeing this. I didn't feel like when I was done, I was like, I, I didn't really need to watch this. I didn't really need to watch. It. I didn't need to know, um, you know, what Al Pacino went through as a sixty-year-old. It, it was nice, I guess, to see that you know um, he was kind of redeemed by the end, but also like the sins of his past caught up with him, and um, you know, by the end, uh, again, I don't want to spoil anything, but something pretty tragic happens at the end that honestly kind of shocked me. I was not expecting that uh, to happen at all. But just getting into the movie, Al Pacino, I loved him so much in the first two. He is a great actor, but somebody said to me, I think in the comments or our live stream or something, um, they said that Al Pacino to them it, it didn't feel like Michael in this movie. He felt like Al Pacino, and I could totally see that when I'm watching this film. I, I don't see Michael Corleone. I see Al Pacino in his very elevated, like Al Pacino, like I'm Al Pacino. Ooh, ah, nah, jig, ah, nah. Like I feel like he didn't he didn't act like that back in the 70s when he was first getting started. He was more subtle, he's more was more subdued um, in his performance. Um, and in this one, he's still a, a little bit more elevated. You know, he's screaming a little bit more uh, than I remembered him doing. And he does feel more like Al Pacino um, than Michael Corleone. So I, I totally get that. Uh, so definitely not my favorite Michael uh, Corleone performance, uh, Al Pacino performance as that character. Um, for and like I said, like his arc, like it, it's so tragic and so dark. By the time we get to the end of the second one, it is nice to see a little bit of levity. It is nice to have the, a little bit better closure with Kay. It makes me feel a little bit better. Um, but also like it, it does kind of take away from that ending a little bit because you know what's going to happen in the future. Um, Diane Keaton in this movie, she probably has more screen time than she did in the first two movies. I didn't really like her character. I didn't really like her performance all that much in this movie. Um, and I just didn't feel like it fit. It just didn't feel right. Uh, c considering what all they had went through, what all happened and like him slamming the door in her face. Um, you know, we don't know what happens in the, in those 20 years. Like maybe they had a, a decent relationship and, you know, he let her have the kids and all that kind of stuff. Um, on the weekends or whenever she wanted. I don't know. Maybe that was just a moment 
in time. And then after that, uh, their relationship got a little warmer. But I got the sense from the beginning of this movie that they hadn't really talked that much um, in the 20 years. So it didn't make sense to me why she would still love him after all of that. And she, it kind of took away from the line because uh, she has a line in this movie where it's like, I never stopped loving you. And it kind of took away from the line that she says in The Godfather 2, you know, after she has the abortion, where she says, at this moment in time, I feel nothing for you. I have no love for you at all. And I never thought that that would happen. So her to say in this one um, that uh, I never stopped loving you kind of contradicts that. And it didn't make a lot of sense. So I didn't like Kay. And like, it was nice to see them back together. I'm not saying it wasn't nice. And it made me feel a little bit better about, you know, the ending of Godfather 2. But also it kind of, it took away from the impactful uh, nature of the ending of the, of the second one to me. So, uh, Talia Shire is Connie. Like she's, you know, it, she felt like the character. She felt like the character of Connie, but Connie's never been one of my, uh, favorite characters anyway. So I think she was good in this. It, it kind of felt weird how she was trying to, uh, position in, in certain areas and kind of like get behind, uh, Vincent a little bit and help him and guide him. It's like, how do you know the, the machinations of what's going on with the, within the crime order and stuff? Uh, maybe she's been watching Michael. Maybe she's been learning from him for the past 20 years, but the, she was never really part of the decision-making process for the family. So it felt a little bit weird for her to be the advisor, um, of Vincent in this one in certain scenarios. So, um, Andy Garcia as Vincent. I, I did like this. I thought that this was, uh, maybe the strongest part of the movie was Andy Garcia, uh, Vincent's relationship with Michael Corleone because he is Sonny's son, uh, James Conn's son. So those two characters, Michael and Sonny are, um, you know, polar opposites of the family. So I liked seeing that, uh, parallel between their relationship, Michael and Sonny, um, or Vincent's relationship to, um, you know, Vito's, Vito's relationship with Sonny in the first movie. Um, and he even says the same lines, you know, never tell anybody what you're thinking. So I like seeing that parallel, parallel relationship of, you know, the guy that can keep his cool and kind of has his head on straight. Um, and then the loose cannon and their interactions and him trying to teach Vincent how, um, to be a, a proper Don and proper leader for this family and kind of relinquishing the reins to him at a certain point in the film. I didn't think that Andy Garcia gave the best performance, but I did. I liked the character. I liked the idea of the character um, and kind of coming full circle uh, for that family. So, um, yeah, I liked that whole kind of storyline and dynamic between Michael and uh, and Vincent in the movie. So that, 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 to me, was probably one of the more stronger parts of the film. Um, let's get into Sofia Coppola um, as the daughter Mary Corleone. She's... Uh, She's pretty awful. <laughs> She's pretty awful. I, I heard, you know, that's all you usually hear about when you hear about uh, The Godfather Part 3 Coda is Sofia Coppola's performance as uh, as Mary Corleone. Um, so it was definitely hyped up and I was expecting a train wreck. But also I was like, is it really that bad? And then you watch and you're like, oh, damn, like that's 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 pretty bad. Uh, She's awful. Uh, She's awful in the movie. Um and she gets a lot of screen time. <laughs> she gets a lot of screen time for being uh, so awful in the film. So yeah, that lived up to the hype for me. Uh, she was really bad. Um, so that definitely kind of brought the film down a little bit. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what they were thinking. Um, for, by all accounts, she's a really good director. I've seen a couple of her movies, so she seems to do better behind the camera than in front. I haven't seen her in anything else, but she was pretty awful in this, and the whole storyline between her and uh, and Vincent, like their cousins, was that like acceptable back in the day or something? Because everybody treated it like it was okay. Uh, like Al, Al Pacino or Michael Corleone wasn't, you know, okay with it, but only because like he didn't, he was just being like the protective father and the and the boyfriend um, angle. It was it, he didn't care about them being cousins. It's not like he he didn't care about them being cousins. It was just he didn't want him messing around with his daughter. Um, and everybody just seemed so accepting of it. It, it was weird. Um, but you got uh, Joe Man Mantigna, which I, I've seen in different things. I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. I'm sure I'll get corrected in the comment section. He was Zo Joey Zaza in this movie. Um, I thought he was going to end up being a pretty good villain, but then something happens in the middle. He kind of gets taken out of the equation, so that was a little disappointing. Uh, the helicopter scene, like that whole meeting where the helicopter takes them all out, that was awesome. Uh, there's some really gruesome scenes, like in the final act of this movie that I did appreciate as well. <sighs> Overall though, it's, uh, 
it's okay. It's okay, but it really doesn't need to exist. And, um, you know, I, I'm fine with it existing, but it does definitely take away a lot uh, from those first two. I can watch those standalone and still appreciate them as the masterpieces as they, as they are, but I, I cannot see myself revisiting this one too often because, again, it just kind of takes away from the experience. So in, in the future, I will like to think of this as just kind of like an Elseworld story. Um, and when I watch the first two Godfathers, I'm going to try to forget that this even exists. Um, and I'm not going to count it like in the canon because I don't want the, some of the things that this movie does um, to exist in that in that world for those first two movies. So it's OK. It's OK is what I'll say. I'll give it a I'll give it a three. Um, I'll give it a three at three out of five, three out of five. It's a decent movie. If I'm taking into account some of my problems with it and how it takes away from the first two and I might drop it to a 2.5 but as a standalone film I would say it's a three out of five it's a well-directed movie well shot um and all that stuff the transfer the 4k transfer again looked fantastic it didn't pop as much um as the first two but there's some great sequences again they deal with a lot with the catholic church and they go to rome and, and sicily and uh so you have those robes and those reds and stuff in the background and um, so aesthetically, it looks really good in 4K. So it definitely looked, it was on par with the first two. It looked really good, but didn't have those opportunities to shine, I think, because it is a newer movie as well. Um, so overall, I enjoyed it. Again, I wanted to, to, to cover this one because so many people wanted to hear my thoughts. Uh, so I wanted to get it out there. So I liked the movie. The transfer was great. This is still, you know, a great box set. The features too, guys. Again, I'm so sorry in the first video uh, that I kind of glossed over those. So the features are really spectacular. Um, in this. So yeah, I, I recommend this set still guys. And uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody watching. Like, uh, comment down below your thoughts on Coda. Um, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Turn on those bell notifications and follow me on all my social media accounts. Those links are in the description and we'll see you next time.